five, four, three, two, one. Hi, it's me, your favourite teacher, your least favourite teacher, one of them. It's Mr. Ye- oh, Mr. Yates, I keep saying there's no data. It will sort itself out. Oh, I was going to wait for it to come back. It will come back. There we go, we're back again. Um, it's Mr. Yates. Hi, don't panic. Don't worry, it's my end, not your end. I'm in an bu- underground bunker, which means there's not much light, and it means there's not much internet. So, woo, we'll do what we can um, to keep going. So, thank you for joining us in this amazing online lesson, this virtual world in which we have to live our lives through now because we can't do anything. We're not allowed to do anything. So thanks for joining. I know you've got way better things. I see some of you want to go and watch um, Bargain Hunt. Unfortunately, I'm not on iPlayer. However, Bargain Hunt will be. You can watch them all as much as you can. I will be on recorded those. You can't watch it now for whatever reason. You can watch later. I will upload it afterwards with all the good fun bits still included. So starting off with... Hello, it's me. Yeah. So uh, it's blanked. Don't need that one for the moment. So today we're going to carry on looking at what we started looking at last time, which feels like ages ago. Thanks for the emails on Friday. Like, sir, where's my work? I want to do my work. Obviously, you don't type like that, but you know. Um, I was planning to do it during your lesson, upload it then, but unfortunately, I couldn't because I was teaching drama. I was covering somebody else. That's why. You didn't have your work sent to you last Friday. I know how much you love your work. Anyway, so this was meant to be for last Friday, that's, but we'll do it now. So, how is suspense and tension evident in the poem? So, learning objective is to be able to explain how suspense and tension is used in the poem. So, I would expect you to consider the effectiveness of a gothic poem and to consider how word choice can affect meaning and create tension. So, in today's lesson, we're going to explore the poem The Raven again. I know it's been a while. I'll reread it to you because you forget everything. Um... And we will listen to the poem, I'll read it, and look at the gothic features and consider their effect. So our key vocabulary focus is narrator, which we hopefully know what a narrator is. Narrative, hopefully we know what a narrative is. Um, I'll make sure stream's still going, I get panicky. Um, narrative, sequence, pathetic fallacy, remote setting, supernatural, rhyme, and first person. So... Some people I can see here in the chat talking lovely. I've put your um, house points on. Do you get house points for tuning in live? Because, you know, why why not? Why not? So, next slide once it loads. It's like being in the classroom again. The Raven. Woo! So, I'll just open up the... There we go. Hopefully, I opened the right... Yes! So, I'm going to read The Raven out to you. Because I know how much you love my reading voice. You all turn up to the library that time to hear me read. So... Here we go. Here we here we go. Here here we go. Oh, feel free to email me if you don't want to talk in the chat, because I get that. Because some of you don't want YouTube accounts. <laughs> I don't. Who wants a YouTube account? So, The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. I need to get my best reading voice on. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember it was the bleak December. Make sure it streams to go. I think I remember it was bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my books a keys of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, nameless here for evermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance to my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, that this is, this it is, and nothing more lovely.'" Presently, my soul grew stronger, hesitating, 
Then no longer, sir, said I, or madam, truly, your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is, I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door, darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into the darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming, dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was a whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, I said, surely this is something this is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what there at is and the mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment and this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. I love it, you so paying attention here. Open here I flung the shutter, when, with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped the stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least subsience made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with the mien of lord or lady perched above my chamber door. Perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird beguiling my face fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern and decorum of the countenance it wore. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven thou, I said, art thou sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven wandering from this nightly shore? Tell me what thy lordly name is in the night's platoonian shore, quoth the raven never more. Let's make sure that I'm just keeping that in the chat. Much I marvelled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevance bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above this chamber door. Bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door, with such name as never more. But he, raven, sitting lonely on the placid bust, spoke only that one word as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing farther than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said never more. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, doubtless, I said, what it utters it's, is its only stock and store. Caught from some unhappy master, whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of never, never more. But that raven still beguiling my face said sad, I don't know what I read there, but it wasn't there, was it? But the raven still beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking, fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking, nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining, on the cushion's velvet lining, that the lamp light gloated o'er. But whose velvet vial is lining with the lamp light gloating o'er? She shall press, ah, never more. Then methought the air grew denser, perfume from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose foot floors tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee by these angels he hath sent thee. Respite, respite. And uh, nepenthe from the memories of Lenore, quaff, oh quaff this kind nepenthe, and forget the lost Lenore, quaff the raven. Nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted, on the desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, let me truly, I implore. Is there, is there balm in Jaleed? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quaff the raven, nevermore. 
few more, then we'll get the work done. Prophet, said I, think of evil prophet still with bird or devil. By the, that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Adam it shall clasp a sated maiden whom the angels name Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, quoth the raven nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fire, and I shrieked upstanding. I'm starting, sorry. Get thee back into the tempest and the nice Platonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy sh soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak out from my heart and take thy form from off my door. And the raven never flitting still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallid bus of palace just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all seeming all the seeming of a demon that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws a shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted never more. So, that is the poem. So, because I thought it would be a bit mean to give you these straight away, we'll go straight into it now. Here we go. There's your starting... Um. There's your starting, what should we call it? Oh, no, there's a bit again. Starting questions, 10 questions. Make sure your date and title's written in. You've got the date underlined, your title underlined. And I'll be around there with me ruler, making sure it's done. You know who you are, who normally sits in my front row. I'm looking at you because you never have your date and title underlined. And there's an expectation I can give you a one point. Yeah. Five minutes. Answer to questions. Your time starts now. I upload your house points for joining in. If I see you on the stream, you'll automatically get house points if you don't oh thank you whoever's just subscribed ah oh, thank you i'll make sure that people get house points oh i'm still on microphone they can hear me singing right five minutes answered five minutes answered questions i've got my emails open so if you're not on the chat for any reason then you can send emails instead I'm not going to give you extra housies for subscribing. I mean, that's a great idea, but just subscribe anyway. I mean, who knows what fun I could have with this channel eventually. Quite a few people. I'm impressed. You've got three minutes left. I mean, some of you are so keen to join my other class yesterday. I mean, that was impressive. But, you know, I can't let random people in.
So you have one more minute. One more minute. I love it how everyone's just trying to cheat by asking each other the answers. I love the fact you're actually really interested. Well, I say really interested. You appear to be really interested. Okay, we'll go through the answers in one more minute. One more minute and we'll go through the answers. We've been doing this for 16 minutes already. Wow, that's that's impressive. If you're struggling, Google the poem and get the poem up maybe on your technological device which has internet access. Because all the answers are actually written in the poem. I've just got the poem up on my screen. Um, oh, that made me jump. So that is time up. We are time up. So, number one. Who wrote The Raven? Who wrote The Raven? The Raven was written by Edgar Allan Poe, the same person who wrote The Telltale Heart. It was written by Edgar Allan Poe. What time of day is The Raven set? It is set at night time. Okay, it's set at night time because it's knocking at the door at night. What month is the raven set? It is set in December. It says it in the poem, your second stanza, I believe it says it there. What does the man hear whilst he is reading a novel? He hears a knocking at the door, a tapping at the door, chamber, well, tapping at the door. What tone is created by the poem? A tone of suspense, fear, um, suspense, fear. Um, I've got an email. Okay, that's fine. I oh, don't worry about logging in. It's fine. Don't worry. Um, you'll still get the house points for joining in. Whoever who person who just sent me that message. Um, yeah, we've got clicky clicks. Yeah, legs. Um, okay. So, tone, mystery, horror, suspense. Um. I'll go for mystery. Why is the man feeling sad? Because he's home alone and he hears something knocking at the door. So he's fearing um, that something's going to happen. Where does the raven sit? On top of the chamber door. What is meant by the phrase never more? No more, I would say. It's no more. Never more. It's an interesting um, word. Never more. Quite, quite good. Yeah. Why a raven? Because I think about if you think about the connotations of a raven, this is when I miss certain people in my class because they know more about connotations than me. Tension, yes, we'll accept that tension. Um, why a raven? Raven, because if you think about what we associate ravens with, um, ravens are associated with graveyards, associated with um, death. Okay, so we, by having a raven instead of a dove, um, raven feels like a more of a horror theme. If I said a beautiful robin, you wouldn't be thinking, oh, you'd be thinking, oh, instead of what? Was a raven, you go, what? A little bit more then. Oh. Uh, what setting is used in the poem and why? If you've watched, uh, if you were here for me with me for the last lesson we did, um, you would have watched the. Uh... Oh, well. See, it's on you more than I did. He's sad because his di wife died. Well done. Um, yes, that is correct. You are correct. He's alone. Well, yeah, 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 we'll go with that. Um, you see, I told you you know more than me. I was too busy focusing and just forgot. Um, what settings is he using the poem? Well, I was going to keep going because otherwise people will be like, Sir, you actually teach us. So I was getting fired. No, I'm not getting fired. I'm going to go through that again. Um, what setting is used in the poem and why um, used in that mansion -y house? Um, that mansion -y house. It must be a big house because it's got a chamber. A chamber door. So if you've got a chamber door, then you must be quite posh to have a chamber door. So that's why I had to go mansion. And also because that's, that's what we had in the Simpsons episode. So there we go. Just going to tell you the truth. Um, yeah. So add up your scores out of 10. And if you've got 10 out of 10, well done. I'm going to give you a clicky click, a virtual clicky click, because I've got it here. Um, there we go. Some virtual clicky clicks for you there. Um, I haven't got any prizes to give out. I mean, apparently we went to send postcards, but I don't know how the hell I went to send postcards when there's no post, which is always fun. So we've gone through those answers now, and I don't know what's going to appear on the next side because I planned this ages ago. So, if I were in your position, 
I'd identify three structural shifts in the poem, write a sentence on what the writer focuses our attention on, at beginning, middle and end. So maybe it'll be more useful if I upload the poem up to class charts for you and then you can open that up through class charts if you haven't Googled it and got it up yourself. So I'm going to set the time for 10 minutes. I'll also upload that to class charts for you at the same time. Right, here we go. I love everyone saying they got 10 out of 10. Let's have a look. 10, well done. Well done. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Oh, I've got six. Well, at least you're honest. Well done. Thank you. 8 and 10 in terms of questions. Oh, I can't remember what the questions 8 and 10 are now. Um, to question 8. What's meant by the phrase nevermore? It's negative. Setting. Um, mansion sort of thing. Right, I'm going to make sure I get back to this one and I love that people sharing the answers, it's great. Right, everyone, I think one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There's two people watching or haven't accounted for. Um, yeah, don't panic. Um, send me an email if you say you watched it and I'll make sure that goes on. Right, there you go, head to Bing then. Watching my oh, not waving. The mic on, yeah. Watching live lesson. Saving. Close homework. View homework. So I'll put it on the homework that you open to get this link on. Choose file. You have eight minutes left. Oh, don't crash. There we go. Who are you? Nine one, aren't we? Guess, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so it should be uploading image. What? Okay. Um, save homework task. Right, so it should be there on that class charts now. So if you go back to class charts, poems should be on there. Okay, so back to this, this question here. Okay. Identify three structural three structural shifts in the poem. Think about focus shifts. Think about structure. What changes in structure? Think about there's a lot of repetition in it. What's the effect of repetition? All right, send us the right to focus is on. Focus our attention on the beginning. To what we're focusing on. We're focusing on the raven. No, I don't think we are. What we're focusing on the middle. What we're focusing on the end. Okay, so the three structural shifts, the three focuses um, between the three. You've got seven minutes. If you've got any questions, feel free to email me. And I'll answer them, but I'll also try to keep up with the live chat as well to see, um, to see that. So structural shifts, the structural, the structural. Oh, I can't say it now. Structural shift. Okay. So think about the focus. What are you focusing on at the beginning? What is the main focus on the beginning of the poem? Are you focusing on the setting? Are you focusing on the main character? Are you focusing on? What you had for lunch, which some of you probably are, because you're probably already eating your lunch. Okay, so what are you focusing on in terms of focus? What what are you focusing on? What is the writer trying to make you think about at that point in the poem? I would say look back through your books, but it's, it's not going to help, is it? I know we always want that person to join, yes, but... Um, Unfortunately, not here. I'm really worried about my internet. My internet's not good for this. Like I said, a bunker's not the best place to stream from, but I didn't really fancy streaming from my bathroom. Hopefully that's helped. Any other questions, send them through. Like I said, email's open as well. 
you've got any work you want to show me either, let me know. And I'll um, look at that as well. So let me know what you want me to do and I'll, I'll, I'll help through it. I feel like this lesson needs a story, doesn't it? But you and the problem is I'm not in the room with you, so I can't tell you the story. Oh, sir, tell us that story. No, we're not doing it. We're not doing a FaceTime or a Skype. Five minutes. That no, we're in, we're not. We're not doing... You see how bad my internet is now? Imagine trying to do a Skype call. Where does the middle start? It's a great question. Um, the middle starts just after the beginning and it ends just before the end. That's the middle part. A whale story. you got another lesson tomorrow. I haven't thought about what we're going to do tomorrow yet, if I'm honest. Depends how much we get done today. Maybe I'll just set Seneca tomorrow. Who knows? Four minutes. <laughs> oh. I don't know. I could tell you a story about my live stream earlier. I was streaming, I was in the middle of it, and it was really enjoyable. And um, I played a YouTube video, and as you do, because it was relevant, I was teaching how to do magic tricks. And then so <laughs> suddenly um, it, it dropped out, and I was like, what? And like the stream ended, my computer shut down, and I was like, "What?" And it turns out the YouTube police were on me, and apparently there's a copyright infraction. Infraction, and they're like, I had to fill in a report and everything. So it's been my lesson. I had to stop doing it. I love the fact you all don't want to do Seneca, so I have to think of something to do tomorrow. Maybe we'll come up with some sort. Of, maybe I'll come up with some sort of writing challenge, and we can write our own ghost story. Um, together. Right, that was kind of relevant story, wasn't it? Uh. It's two minutes. Two minutes. Oh, see, I got, even over the internet, you distract me. Two minutes. Make sure you answer the question. I get in trouble. Oh, yes, I got a subscriber. I don't know who just subscribed. Yes. Now I know you're watching as well. I don't think I had yours. you on. So I'll make sure that... Um, Cash your teacher. Your teacher. Oh. Okay. Don't let me explain why. Probably. You haven't started. <laughs> you got a two minutes. Uh, like I said, Google it. It's on the class charts. On the class charts. Like saying on the Facebook, on the YouTube. It's on the class charts now. So if you want to get on the class charts, get hold of the poem, um, then I suggest you do so. I should probably open it up here you know, so I can talk through it in a moment. I'm thinking I could be YouTube fa famous out of this. It'd be great, wouldn't it? Um... It would be so cool to be YouTube famous on this. I mean, uh, imagine, Mr. Mr. Yeats. That's fine. If you can't do both at once, then panic. Just, just, um, just do do what you can. <laughs> oh, you guys make me laugh. You do make me laugh. About thirty seconds. Right, there we go. Time is up. Um, time is up. So, I can end the visualizer. So, identify three structural shifts in the poem. Write a sentence of what the writer focuses the attention on. So, if we go to the poem, 
to think about the structural shifts in the poem. What is the writer trying to focus our attention on? This is the bit where I do the teaching. Um, oh, this is bad. I do not want to set up a vegetable blog. Um, right, let me just check this just this work a minute if it sounds email me. I like getting through these photos of people's work, but it always makes me a bit conscious that I don't know what I'm going to see on the photo. Uh, and we're going to focus on the setting as this is the quotes once upon a midnight dreary, while well, pondered weak and weary. Yes, I agree. The beginning, here we go. Thank you to the person who emailed me. I don't want to give away names because when this goes public, obviously I don't want to get in trouble for it. So yeah, um, at the beginning, it focuses on the setting as I know this is where, quotes so setting at the beginning, lovely. You've got the December, you've got weak and weary, um, this is all about setting. You've got the sound. There's the senses. It covers all the senses. Sight, sound, no taste. Um, there's like most of the feelings and senses. Towards the middle. In the middle of the story, the focus is on the raven when it says, in their step, stately the raven and saintly days of yore. Lovely. Um, yes, I agree completely. I can't even find the middle right now. Page two. Yes, there's a page per thing, isn't it? Open air, I flung the shutter, flutter and flutter, in step the stately raven. Yes, so I'd agree that this, the middle bit, the second page, is about the raven. Um, it flying around, landing on the bust, okay? And finally, in the end of the story, the focus is on the raven as well when it quotes his fiery eyes. Yes, it is about the raven at the end, I guess. Guess in this pressing syllable, then swung open his feet. Prophet, said I, quoth the raven evermore. It's more about um, it's more spiritual, isn't it? I say the ending. Um, it focuses on palace. It focuses on plutonian. It focuses on loads of gods and goddesses. So I'd say the focus at the end is on um, it's more on the focus of um. Oh, don't tag that person. The focus is more on the spiritual nature of the raven lovely so mark your work make some corrections um and then and then obviously thank you and send me your work i'm sure the person who just sent me their work and i read it out live and be like no don't read it and i've finished reading it now so um right so now we now we're getting memes through lovely thank you very much <laughs> I really want to share this, but I can't. Um, yeah, it's a gif. Thank you. When Sir's trying to explain a raven. Right, you, now you're really going to distract me and ruin ruin, um, ruin my ruin my stream, ruin my ruin my monetization possibilities. Right, up to 16 people. Lovely. Thanks for joining in. If you just joined, make sure you um, like and subscribe to my channel and tune in for more. Than, oh, I'm joking. Imagine. Imagine if I was um, that sad. Right, here we go. So, answer... Oh, I'm in the way. Answer the following questions in your books. Let me just minimise me slightly. I know everyone wants to see my beautiful face. Oh, is that the wrong... Yeah, I've minimised the wrong one. There we go. If I go... Shoot. There we go. Just for the moment. Um, answer the following questions in your books. What words are used to describe the raven? List them, okay? You need to list every word that's used to describe the raven. Why do you think it is described this way? Okay, so think about why the raven is described in that manner, in that way. Where does the story take place? Create a list of words from the poem that are used to describe the setting and atmosphere. During the course of The Raven, what changes occur in the narrator's attitude towards the bird? What brings about this change? Okay, so there's quite a lot of questions there, actually, looking at it. An extension. How is the word nevermore related to the narrator's emotional state at the end of the poem? How does this repetition create suspense and tension? loads of questions. I didn't make this PowerPoint. Obviously, you know I never make anything. Um, so yeah, answer those questions on the board, on the screen. Um, answer the questions on the, on the screen. Just making sure that... Yes, red pen's fine. The beginning was focused on the setting. Oh, there we go. So I just answered. Right, lovely. So I need to make sure I actually put the visualizer thing on because otherwise you can't see how much time we've got left and it'll get too big and you can't see the work. 
I'll cover them up with a little ghost. There we go. So, um, how long do you need? You need quite a few questions. 10 minutes. Answer questions in your books. Your time started. I should do background music, shouldn't I? Um, don't know. Yep, you can email your work later. Sorry, I was making sure that my microphone was on. You don't have to email it. You can keep it to yourself. And if I ever see you again, then I will look at your work then. Right, you want background music. Shall I sing it? La, 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 La 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 la. I'm not looking at the chat. So let me see. Oh, what is this photo? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm, I'm not even gonna ask. Um, okay. I'm scared now. Why did I suggest emailing me? This is a bad move. You don't have to put every single word, but um, the majority of them would be nice, wouldn't it? I'm just waiting for this. Laughing at memes like... Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. Now, I, I, I'm not a meme submission page, and it's not like, let's see what reactions we can get out of this. Uh, um. Oh, no. Right, you should be focusing on your work instead of sending me memes. Yeah, there is I mean, Right. Oh thank you. That's fine. Um you don't have to talk on it, it's fine. I just make sure that you get the house points for tuning in. Okay. Tuning in, house points. There we go. Yes, I got the email. I was really confused by that email. Was, who is it? Who is who is it? Who is it? Please don't be inappropriate. I just my emails are monitored, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I did get your email. I just want to know who who it is. That's the main thing. That is, it's, it's not you. Ah, oh, this is. No, I. Oh no, you've crashed my computer. I oh, was still here. Phew, my computer crashed. Oh, that's who it is. Oh, mean mail, no. I mean... <laughs> right, so that's right. And now I get the it's me things, the image finally loaded, right? Oh, dear. We've got five minutes left. But okay, now we get we're stra these memes are straying into dangerous territory.
Am I am I still on? Am I people still hear please say you can still hear me. Please say you can still hear me. No. Right, here we go, come on. Should be back over again in a minute. Right, it should come back now. There we go. Right, we're back. I think we're back. We've got three viewers going. That's not good enough, is it? No, right. I'm not. I'm not doing. I'm not doing agony, Ant. That's that's my limit. All right. Right. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing agony, Ant. <laughs> Three minutes. Four. Yeah, we're up to four again. It should. It's. It's going to come back now. It's going to come back. It's back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm live. I, I don't know why I said that. That was embarrassing, wasn't it? Okay, we have about two minutes remaining to answer these questions. Two minutes. It is coming back. It is coming back. It should be back. Right, it's a good connection. It's good and it's working. So, two minutes. Two minutes and we should be back. I'm scared now. Oh, here we go. Here we go. The main man has arrived. I think it's five house points for taking part. Um, I think it was the memes you were sending me on the email that crashed it. So please stop sending memes. Right, one minute left. Right, we can stop pressing F for now. <laughs> yeah, I'm back. Woo! Oh, for God. no. Why? Is it seems I'm back, it crashes. <sighs> right, we should be back. I know why. I leapt too far forward. Got about 30 seconds. There we go. The time is gone. I'm just going to keep going as if nothing's gone wrong. All right. So. I can close that one. Lovely. So, what words are used to describe the raven? Yeah, please stop spamming. Please stop spamming. It's annoying me now. What words are used to describe the raven? Um, list them. So, what words are used to describe the raven? Let's have a look. So, Obviously, we know the raven's the focus of the middle part, so we'll go to page two. But the raven's sitting lonely on the placid bus. That's the bus that's described. Um, saintly days, stately raven. Um, maybe it's a bit further up as well. I don't know. Stately. Ancient. 
Any other words that I've missed? Yay, thanks for subscribing. Um, any other words that I've missed? No, quite a few there. Okay, so stately, ancient. Why do you think it's described this way? I think, let's hear some answers. Let's hear some answers to these questions. I need to get back to this one, don't I? Let's hear some answers to, thanks for arriving. Yes, I know they've arrived. Thank you. Um, so let's hear some answers to why you think the raven just described as ancient and stately. All right, so Woobs is here. That's fine, you can leave because you can come back afterwards. You've already got your ass points. Um, right, that's past the house points. Right, so why is why do you think the raven has been described as ancient and stately? If someone writes something in um, the chat, please, or email me or... Um, Something like that. So why? Why is the raven... Ah! Oh. Okay, back again. It's this this bunker. This bunker's not good for it. Yeah, so think about why it's stately and ancient. It's probably because cause it's old, because you're not important. Oh, that's probably not. Well, actually, um, about me. hopefully it's not about me. Hopefully it's not me who's not important. Um, I'm not giving up. Um, yeah, so it's in terms of it's imp it's stately, it's old. It's meant to say, it makes it seem more important, doesn't it? Stately, old. It's make it a symbol maybe of establishment a symbol or just a symbol of society maybe at the time oh that was deep wasn't it where does the story take place um in a mansion i believe because the, the simpsons episode everything that i ever do is obviously related to simpson episode so where does the story take place the story we know the settings up here right in the first page Wrapping chamber door in a chamber. Okay. Yeah, so in a, cha in a chamber. Let's make sure I'm not missing anything. Yeah, we'll go in a chamber. Lovely. Takes part in a chamber. If you create a list of words. Oh, she's done that. During the course of the Raven, what changes occur in the narrator's attitude towards Burr? What brings about this change? So how does the narrator feel at the beginning? Oh, 121 people. I was going to How is the narrator feeling at the beginning towards the... Oh, see, there's the other person too. Towards the Raven compared to how they feel towards the end towards the Raven. So what is the narrator... Feeling when I add these two things in, people are just having a general chit chat, aren't they? Oh dear! I know you said you don't want me to set um Seneca work tomorrow, but in the moment you're going to leave me with no choice. There we go. Set the five house points for that person. I saw someone else pop up as well. I can't remember who that was. Right. So. Why is why is the um what's the attitude towards the raven? What's the attitude towards the raven? Why are we talking about food? Oh, is it? I could really do it with dominoes. Oh, now you're talking. Is it still open? Huh. What's the what's the narrator's view attitude towards the bird? That's what we're trying to get to. I'm just waiting for something to, um, waiting for someone to send me an answer. Send me an answer. Right. So at the beginning, he's like, "Oh, what's the raven?" He gets a bit scared, but then in the end, the raven warms. He warms to the raven, I think, and it changes the fact they can talk. I guess. Right. I've had enough. What is the word "nevermore" related 
how is the word nevermore related to the narrator's emotional state at the end of the poem? How does repetition create suspense and um suspense and tension? Let's have a look. Let's get the poem back up. So in the beginning, he's a bit scared of the raven. It's ghastly using words like that. And at the end of it, prophet, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or eat devil. He thinks it's a devil. He thinks it's a spirit, okay? He thinks it's a spirit. I think how he's getting, the raven's getting compared to godly things. Um, and the fact that his wife's just died is obviously maybe thinking about that. Um, thinking about how the the thingy the bob the the bird. Think about how the bird could be a spiritual creature because obviously he's just lost his wife. So now he's like, oh, so this bird is a spiritual creature. Maybe it's some message sent from my wife, possibly. How does repetition create suspense and tension? The fact that it's constantly repeated the same words. Like, what does it mean? I want to find out what it means. What does it mean? Um. Yeah, you're distracting me with the chat. Um, the repetition creates suspense. It's like, da da da. We don't know what's going to happen. Oh, nevermore. What does nevermore mean? It's quite an ambiguous word, isn't it? The fact the repetition of ne nevermore creates the suspense and the tension. That something like that. My computer froze then. So. How is suspense and tension evident within the poem? I distinctly remember it was in the bleak December and each separate separate dying ember wrought his ghost upon the floor. There is a quote. What I'd like you to do is write everything you can about that quote. What does that quote mean? It's near the beginning of the text. Okay, so everything you can think of about that quote. We're going to explode it, hence the graphic, okay? So we're going to explode the quote. I'm going to give you a timer. No, oh, that's a big timer. We don't need that timer. Um, I'm going to give you a timer of. I can make that bigger again now. I can make myself bigger again now. Wee. Let me get back to me. Go wee. Like that. Oh, I just clicked the wrong one. Wee. There we go. So you need to create. Uh, explode the quote. So write the quote down and write everything you can about the quote. What does it show us? What does it mean? Okay, five minutes. Time starts now, and then hopefully you'll distract me long enough to make me think about what I need to do tomorrow. So what would you like to do in tomorrow's lesson? There's a final lesson for term. It's got to be something about ghost stories, okay? So what do you want to do before about ghost stories for the last lesson at the end of term? Let me know. You've written your own ghost stories before, isn't it? Um... You did it for your homework. They're still in the in school, but school's been locked down now, so I can't get in and read them. Right, you want to do ghost memes. Who can create the best ghost story meme? Best memes about ghost stories. That, we can't do a whole lesson about it. We can write our own... Oh, maybe we could all write a ghost story together. Maybe I just don't plan anything. Maybe we just see what happens. We turn up, we go, right, let's plan it. Let's do a ghost story workshop. We can't watch Gasper the Ghost. We can't do Boris Johnson as a ghost. We'll do a ghost story workshop, maybe. <laughs> we do mark our assessments. Oh, that's a good story. When did you do your assessments? Last week, wasn't it? Um, Yeah, well, I want to mark them. I'm not lying. Like I do genuinely want to mark your assessments. However, there is a problem with the um, assessments for me and your assessments are having geographical difficulties. Now the, the reason for this is we cannot go back into school. We're not allowed to go back into school to get anything um, because it's been proper locked down and we're not allowed on site. And if we do, we get big, 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 big trouble. So that's the reason I can't actually mark your books. Otherwise I would do a live dirt task, but there's no point of doing it also at the moment because you can't get back to it. So we're in a uh, little bit where we can't actually go back and mark them. So I do apologize. Yes, yeah, so we'll just do a one. We'll do a ghost story as a class tomorrow, maybe. You've never marked our assessments. I have marked your assessments. That's a lie. I do mark your assessments. Oh yeah, I remember which ones you're on about now. 
Yes, I know the ones you're on about. I have actually marked them. They're in school, all marked. Thank you very much. Um, I do mark your assessments. That's the ones I made you mark, wasn't it? Yeah, no, I have marked. Oh, that's a different story. I didn't, didn't tell you any details, but um, there is a solution for it. Ah, oh, see, yes, I've been waiting for this person to join. I'm happy. I'm going to make sure they get house points. There we go. Yeah, house points for tuning in. Got email. Oh, no. Could be another meme. Oh, it's Casper the ghost meme. Oh, dear. Three minutes left. <laughs> Three minutes left. I'm glad that I can create some sort of social activity at the same time as you guys doing the work. Um, I appreciate it. Yes, I did get your last email. Um, I'm not going to talk about it. Because <laughs> I'm not an agony ant. I told you that. I don't... I Talk, talk to you about it. Um, or I'll email you later on. Obviously, I'm not going to talk about it on the live stream. What time does lesson end? My year nine the other day, and then he sent them out at 12, 1 o'clock. They all start packing. I was like, hang on a minute. This doesn't seem right, and the date is gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Oh, we're back again. We're back again. Phew, don't panic. If it drops, just stay with it, all right? Because otherwise, it will come back eventually. So it goes from like no connection to really good con connection. Yes, I will email you later. All right, two minutes. Well, not two minutes. Two minutes to one o'clock. I got excited. So you're at, you're exploding this quote. Um, exploding the quote. What can we say about the poem based on this quote? So distinctly, what does distinctly mean? Remember, it was the bleak December. Why December and bleak? Why are they teamed up with each other? Separate die in each a separate dying ember wrought his ghost upon the floor. What does that mean? Why is that important? There we go. Time is up. That's why they went ding ling 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 ling. I can't remember if I actually put things on this slide. Let's find out. If not, I'll come back and talk through it. Oh no. Say. Make myself a bit smaller. What can we say? Oh, so I, know, I remember the plan. I was going to draw all over my whiteboard with this one. But it's not going to work, is it? So, ah, I, distinctly, I remember. I don't know why I went to Terry Wogan. I distinctly, I remember. Distinctly, I remember it was the bleak December and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. So, ah, ah, what, the, the fact that we start off with the word ah, what does ah mean? Oh, has that person joined? Oh, yeah. Well, hi. I'll make sure you get house points as well. I haven't given you house points. I think just about everyone's here, aren't they? Um, there we go. There we go. Yeah. So, um, in terms of, ah, oh, it's like a relief, isn't it? You're breathing out. It's non-verbal. It's not um, proper, en proper English. That's not the word, is it? It's not standard English, okay? So, we, when we say something's not standard, not in the English language, standard English, um, in terms of that. Distinctly. So I remember very distinctly. So I remember very well. Great detail. I remember. So it's not like these, oh, I kind of remember it. I kind of remember Sir's live stream. I kind of don't. I mean, who's going to forget this one? It was in the bleak December. So bleak obviously is um, an adjective. So the adjective bleak is cold. In the if you think about some hymns, bleak is in the mid-bleak winter. That one. Uh, yeah. Why do I sound like that? Um, bleak midwinter. So bleak December. Bleak and December are often teamed up because bleak is not a very nice time. It's cold, horrible, nothing around. December obviously being the month. Okay. 
Uh, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost. So each separate, a separate um, being by itself, you can um, think about that. Dying, obviously dying is quite a big theme of the poem as well. Think about the dying wife, the wife's dead. So the fact that an ember's dying is quite significant. Wrought its ghost upon the floor. Ghost, obviously, is ghost in the corner. Um, this one behind you, um, upon the floor, which means it's going to disappear. Lovely. I thought there was going to be more things like that. So how's the suspense tension evident within the poem? Lovely. Next slide. Here we go. So, choose some quotes yourselves. I've uploaded the poem now to Clash Chance. From the poem. Or within the poem. <laughs> Choose your own quotes. Okay, I've got some I can give you, I think, if it needs be. And what words within the poem show suspense or tension? Think about the word nevermore. That's the one you, if you can't think of anything else. Why do you think the author has used this word? How does it create suspense and tension? Has the author used any literary technique? Repetition. So you could do this as a what, how, why paragraph. Okay, I suggest you do it as a what, how, why paragraph. That would be the best way to answer it. Do it as a what, how, why paragraph. I can make myself a bit bigger. Don't need to see the crow, do you? Um, I'm starting to get sniffly. Okay, so do this as a what, how, why paragraph. I can give you... Oh, how long shall I give you? Ah, ten minutes to complete this, okay? You can email me to work or submit it onto class charts and I'll look over it, make sure everything's okay. So, choose a quote. Um, some suggestions for quotes, if you can't find any quotes. Here we go. Yeah, right. There we go. It's, it'll get there. It'll, oh, right. There's my... Are you going to do what I told you to do? So, a quote you may include. Could be... Ah, distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Think about that quote. From my books... Secrease of sorrow, sorrow for the last Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden, rare and radiant also, while whom the angels name Lenore never less here forevermore, nameless here nevermore. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal were ever dared to dream before, but the silence was unbroken and the stillness gave no token. And final quote you could use, and his eyes have all the seeming of the demons that is dreaming and the lamp. Light o'er his dreaming throws his shadow on the floor on my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor. So there's some quotes you could use. But I'm real, um, no, I don't. Right, right, we need to go back through the questions now. Right, Sims 4, right, it goes to Sims 4, it's free on PS4. Um, I'm playing Minecraft three years straight. Yeah, I haven't played it for a while. Um, where's that person not here? What's the word where you use times in a paragraph? Discourse markers is the word you're looking for. The word you use, um, what's the word where you use times in paragraphs? Discourse markers. Oh, dear. So I think we should do a Skype call in the last lesson to turn because then we can share ideas properly. Plus we'll be more engaged. Yeah, no, no. That's, that's just very inappropriate for me to do a Skype call outside of school. Um, Skype call, yo, that person sup. Right, oh, th right. No, you've got to write it. Right, can we play? Do you want to play FIFA later? No. No, we're not playing FIFA. Let's not, we're not having a vote. Do any quote. You can do the selection quote. You can, you can do the same again if you wish, but you make sure you answer those questions. I mean, right, I could copy and paste them onto the chat. That'd probably be easier, wouldn't it? Some quote suggestions. Oh, we had another slide after this. No, I'm not playing FIFA. All right, I'm just going to put the quotes into the chat for you. Oh, 
very close to the limit on my words for those. Okay, so you want to use these quotes, feel free to use them. I was exactly 200, that was. Right, and there's all the quotes for you, okay? So if you want to use those quotes, they're in the chat. You've got six minutes left. <laughs> My plan was to do what, how, why paragraph answering that top question at the end, but clearly we're going to run out of time to do that. And I haven't even been silly this lesson. Wow. Well, I have, but, you know, not to the extent that I normally am. Right, but yeah, right. What's everyone having for lunch, then? I'm having burgers for lunch, because, you know, I'm at home and I can. Well, I've got to go out of the bunker up the ladder in a minute, but um, I'm going to make myself, not make myself, because I've got another lesson in that half hour. I've got someone to make me burgers, not so not my mum. Um, someone to make me burgers, yeah, so it should be fun. So I feel like with the chat going quiet, it means you're actually doing work, which is pretty cool. Ah, oh, that's a great idea. Um, so if you've got a typed up ghost stories, if right, okay, right. I love the fans and love it. Um, if you uh, right, if you want to write your own ghost stories, or if you've got them from before, have them for tomorrow's lesson, whenever it is. Um, when is it? Lesson four tomorrow. So what's that? When is that? What time does lesson four start? Quarter t to two. Quarter to two, right? It was for our own ghost stories. Quarter to two, and we'll do like a ghost story re story reading. Um, and we'll maybe write our own. Well, let's do a ghost story workshop. See how it goes. Creative writing ghost story workshop. We'll see. We'll just see what happens. Yeah, we'll make it up on the spot. I write down some ideas and then um, we'll do something like that. So we've got over cereal, ham sandwich, fry up, cereal pasta. Oh. Yeah, that's what I was saying. If you email them to me, I'll read some of them out. If you obviously, I want to tell you, say who wrote them. If you want to give yourself a nickname on there, then feel free to. Beans on toast. Nice. I don't like beans. See, my usual go-to when I was your age was tuna mayo pasta because it's just easy. And if you're feeling exotic, chuck some sweet corn in. Depends if you've got any sweet corn. I'm getting a bit of a cold, but I haven't got the virus. Don't panic. There we go. There goes the money. I never said it. I never said it. I nearly did, but I didn't say it. Anyway, three minutes. Three minutes left. Oh, toasties. Now we're talking. Ham cheese. Got to be the toasties. You don't have to write one, but if you do, send it to me during the lesson tomorrow. Not before it, because my email inbox is, as you can imagine, getting spammed constantly. So I'll lose it in my box of fun. So if you want to email it to me during the lesson tomorrow, then I will, um, I will read some of them out tomorrow. Like I said, email me during the lesson with it. Oh, now is the time for my stream to go excellent collect connection. Oh, it's gone too good. I like the fact people are emailing me telling me not to end the lesson. <laughs> I mean, that's that's pretty cool. So yeah, Seneca work tomorrow, yeah? We'll set you Seneca work. I know how much you love Seneca.
But she spell sandwich right? <laughs> it's not the correct spell. Okay, we've got about one minute left. One minute. I am going to end the lesson because I need to have my lunch and I need to set up for my next lesson. You can't have me. Come on. Oh, why am I fearing this email? <laughs> to be fair, I did that in the university lecture once. Um, yeah, it, it didn't end well. It was like a dead serious lecture about, I think it was voice check, which is a um, very serious, serious um, play about Russia. And um, I started zooming in on my lecture and I made about the whole back row burst start laughing and they got in trouble and I didn't. But in university, you get fined for misbehaving. You don't just get like a warning. Anyway, so. I can't really go through the answers to that. What words within poem create suspense or show tension? Okay, hopefully you've answered that. What do you think the author, who, why do you think the author has used this word? How does it create suspense and tension as the author using literary devices? Lovely. So if I go, if that works, there we go. So what I did want you to do was this, but we're not going to run out of time. I know you really want to carry on. However, you don't have to email it to me. You can keep it to yourselves if you want. But if you want to email it to me, I can look over it. I prefer if you submit it into the box. Like I said, my emails are getting a bit, um, bit full up at the moment. What, how, why, structure, the context of the time period and key language in the poem was been what we would have done. However, we've run out of time. So, oh, I can get rid of, right, oh, I can just go to this one. All right, thanks for tuning in. Um, it's a bit weird. This is the bunker. Um, make sure you, well, make sure you like, follow, subscribe and all that stuff. I think about setting up a, I don't know. Maybe I'll do like a reading club. I know everyone turned up to my reading thing in the library that time. Maybe I'll just do a, a reading thing. Um, you may enjoy that. Um, <laughs> the traffic was bad. It was great. You just got in time for your house point to tuning in live. She got a message in. So I'll make sure that you get that one sent in. Da -da 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 -da. That one. Lovely. Um, so yeah, thanks for tuning in. Make sure tomorrow I'll do something fun for lesson, the final lesson of term. Maybe we'll do a like I said, maybe a writing challenge of some sort, but not the writing challenges you had in, lang in language. I'll make it a bit more fun than that. Maybe we'll do some really fun. I don't know. I don't know what will happen. Who knows? My last lesson I'm going to teach this term. Um, obviously, this is what we're going to have to do now. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, like it, all that stuff for more awesome content. I feel like an idiot saying that. Why did I say it? I don't have to say it. Um, yeah. Also, final key message, make sure you wash your hands, people, because obviously you're not allowed to go outside. Make sure you do your work, um, otherwise you end up in trouble. So make sure you keep up to date with all your work, and then we will not get in trouble. So see you next lesson tomorrow. You catch on my next lesson because it's a private one. Enjoy. I'm going to go. See ya. Have fun. Bye.